Hello, and welcome to Rock the Cash Bar. I'm Ben Mowbray. And I'm Diane Gallagher. Every week, we pick one song and do a deep dive into the lyrics and explore the different ways they've been interpreted. We will also discuss how the song connected to us on a personal level, focusing on all the embarrassing details. Glad to have you here. Now enjoy the show. afternoon, evening, day, morning. I hope you're enjoying your flight, your drive to work, or your mindless wandering through the diaspora of what's left of America. Welcome to episode 14 of Rock the Cash Bar. How are you, Diane? I'm realizing I've never used diaspora. <laughs> Did I even say it right? I don't know. In a it's sentence. A, it's a word I've only read. I have no idea how it's pronounced. <laughs> Look at us pretending to be smart. Usually I'm terrified of it. Uh, how do you pronounce, I wish I could just like write down the word for you. It just occurred to me. Bonafides. Bonafide. You're a bonafide genius. Bonafide. It, it was it. um... Oh, what's the Coen Brothers movie where Holly Hunter is like, he's bonafide. Like she says it over and over. Uh, oh, brother, where art thou? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently it's wrong. Oh. What? I guess it's, uh, it's bona fides is actually like bona fides, apparently. So everyone's saying it wrong? Yeah. Like bona fides a, is what we're supposed to be saying? Yeah, and you can just fuck right off with you. If you're going to pronounce bona fides like that, I don't. I don't need to see your bona fides. I can't say bona fide without Holly Hunter's accent. Bona fide. No. Yeah. <laughs> Welcome to episode 14. Woohoo! Here we are. We are talking today about a legendary local girl. A local yes. girl made good. Beyonce Knowles Carter. Oh my gosh, I'm nervous. I am really nervous about this one. And her relationship with her own last name, I think. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yes. We are doing Don't Hurt Yourself. Thank you, Patreon voters, for voting this one in. This is an episode, like, I know nothing about Beyonce. Right. Like, I, 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 I'm criminally negligent, I think, when it comes to how much Beyonce I've taken in. I didn't really understand her because she sort of came to the fore, I think, in the late 90s, the early 2000s. Destiny's Child. Destiny's Child, which is up, like I was 19, 20, mm -hmm. and I didn't feel like I should have an interest in girl dancing groups. Okay. I thought it was teeny pop, and I definitely felt like I was long past that. Right. Like I was far too emotionally sophisticated. She wasn't hot enough to at least like get you to turn your head. She's and... definitely hot enough to okay. get me to turn my like head. Like you look. For sure. <laughs> yeah. But like in terms of like taking her in or appreciating her as anything beyond a good looking lady, I wasn't emotionally capable of it. And, and, and honestly, just unwilling to do it. Right. Like just not, it wasn't something that went into my dumb young man's brain at the time. Right. And it wasn't until until Lemonade came up. Mm -hmm. I guess it's after the, the, there's the big Solange in the elevator assaulting Jay Z scandal, mm -hmm. and then in the middle of the night, like literally in the middle of the night, yeah. Lemonade gets dropped onto the onto the digital web, and people are, now people are taking in music in a way that I've never really understood before. Like, right, whole new world. Yeah, and but and also just like totally reprocessing her. Like, how are you? Because what the articles that I read basically said this is. A, a, a diss album that's aimed at her own husband. And I went, how does that even work? Ooh, like, <laughs> it caught everybody's attention because the elevator scene came out, uh, you know, came out like a scene, like a movie. Um, it dropped. And I remember being like, wait, what's going on? Is her sister crazy? And then watching and I'm like, no, she's livid. I don't think she's crazy. And my first thought was, Oh, he fucked up. He cheated. Yeah. He must have cheated. Mm -hmm. He must have been busted cheating. Yeah. This is a real family drama. It's the only way. I just, I just remember how Beyonce, how still Beyonce was on that elevator, how she wasn't reacting to it. Like she must have known. 
She must have felt like there was a security camera or something on her. Or... I honestly didn't know she was in the elevator. <laughs> she was. Like, Ooh. like sometimes when you get in, in, a, in a violent situation like that or a confrontational situation, you're, you're like rooted in place. Like you don't know how to react. You're not used to this. It's outside of your comfort zone. So you just, you end up deciding to do nothing. Like yeah. maybe that was happening with her, but I didn't get that feeling. I definitely got the feeling she was just like, I'm going to get past this. Like these elevator doors are going to open up. I'm going to get out of here. Yeah. Like, and I have to play it cool. Like you said, um, well, you guys will see, we will have a special guest on and we talk about this a little bit, but she may have been very aware of cameras being on and she's like, mm -mm, uh -uh, I'm going to play it cool right now. <laughs> <laughs> so we wanted to do an episode on Beyonce, despite the fact that neither of us know particularly much about Beyonce. So we asked some people to give us their recommendations for a song that we could pick apart on Lemonade. Uh, and we chose, or the, our Patreon subscribers chose Don't Hurt Yourself. Should we jump into the lyrics on this? Let's do it. All right. Ooh la la, don't hurt yourself. Who the fuck do you think I is? You ain't married to no average bitch, boy. You can watch my fat ass twist, boy, as I bounce to the next dick, boy. Woo. And keep your money, I got my own. Got a bigger smile on my face being alone. Bad motherfucker. God complex. Motivate your ass. Call me Malcolm X. Yo operator or innovator. Fuck you, hater. You can't create you can't recreate her. No. You'll never recreate her. No, hero. So So coming out of the gate strong. This sounds like to me like Back in the days when everybody left messages on a recorder on the phone, like he didn't pick up and this is exactly what she's screaming. <laughs> I don't know how Jay-Z can get out of bed in the morning. I, I would, I'd still be hiding under the desk. I would like all of that is just absolutely terrifying to me. Just absolutely. I cannot imagine making a woman that mad, especially not a woman that I'm in an intimate relationship with. That yeah, so the bulk of this, and this may be hard for you because I don't see you as being a big bad cheater boy in like multiple, multiple times and having to hear this wrath. Like this song, I can't say much to it about like, you know, understand how angry she is. I want to hear your perspective of what it's like to be getting like pummeled with this as a man. I've never been pummeled with like like at, at this level okay. like this. Like I've had fights and arguments. I've had disputes, and I appreciate you saying that I don't come off as a, as a cheater boy. I I have yeah. cheated in 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 the past. There was there I got I got caught once okay. ten years ago. Uh, but it wasn't with Beyonce. You no, know, it wasn't with Beyonce. <laughs> but that's the like. I don't even know where to, where to start. Like the line that, that, that bounces, that, 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 sorry, that bounces out at me is as I bounce to the next dick boy. Yeah. Like that's kind of, it's kind of terrifying as a guy to, th to think of like getting into this kind of argument where like, this is the ground you're going to fight on. Mm -hmm. There's a comedian that I really admire that tells a story about how he's dating this woman and it's not a good relationship, but the sex is fantastic. And, uh, but they're not getting along. And apparently she turned to him and just goes, you better start acting right or I'm going to start fucking people. You know, <laughs> <laughs> that was going to be my next question. What hurts more losing the relationship or knowing she's banging other dudes immediately? It, I, I, it like it depends. Like it's it's if if she's using it as a weapon, then that would be very painful. Okay. Like it like knowing that like breaking up with somebody and then knowing that they're that they're starting their life over again. They're starting like, that's not that painful. Right. Like, like you, I I cheer for them. Like go on, live yeah. your life. I you know I hope I know someday you'll have a beautiful life. <laughs> I know you'll be a star. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> like you, you you sort of root for that, but when it's actually like like getting thrown in your face. I'm a fuck your friends. <laughs> yeah. That is that is really. Really gonna hurt, and like, I don't like I. Not in my present relationship. I've been in relationships in the past where that was honestly something that I was worried about. Like, like I can't. Yeah. I don't want you to be with that guy, or I don't want you know. Yeah. Or I don't want this person coming back to me and saying, "Oh, I was with her a couple of weeks ago, and you fucked up, buddy." Like that. No, it, there's a that's a real stabbing in the heart. Can we have a quick conversation about like? It feels like girls can do that. You hear about this a lot, like a girl going and banging another guy's friend. And to me, I'm like, how are you ever friends with that dude again? But that seems like something guys can just get past. We do. Like, it's not It's not easy. Like, it's definitely something that, that you have to get over. But I think, and this is 
not it's really kind of crass but like we get over it because we understand you understand each other yeah you understand that there could be zero emotional attachment to that and you also understand that 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 no guy is going to give up an opportunity you know to to be with a woman you know like if if she's giving him a chance then it's not like yeah there's some anger there's there's some blame and there's some why didn't you think about me but it's not like a fundamental like like how dare you do this it's an amazing difference between men and women Women would be yeah. like end of friendship forever. <laughs> yeah, well, that, that, that's because, and, and maybe this is this is ignorant, but because like your options are m- wider than our than ours are. Right. Like you know, when a woman says like like, like oh I'm I'm taking control of my sexuality, I'm gonna I'm gonna control who I am as a, as a sexual being. My honest reaction to that is also like, well, well, you're controlling mine too. Yeah, that's <laughs> like, true. I, yeah, I won't get to have a sexuality without you deciding. Right, that I get to be with you. Yeah, what was it, Joe Rogan? That was like, if men had like little T Rex arms and couldn't like pleasure themselves, like couldn't masturbate, they would really just be like, whatever you need, darling. Do you need this? You exactly. know, just like yeah, <laughs> we hold all the power. Mm-hmm. Like, in that case, you definitely. Do. Can you, I can't imagine getting in a war like this with Beyonce. <sighs> Who would Beyonce, like, if Beyonce wanted to vengeance fuck to get back at Jay-Z? Um, like, that's got to be what Kanye is. Con- I was going to say Kanye. You know? He has to be, like, <laughs> one of these days, man. <laughs> one of these days. Or, like, um, like Bill Gates or something. I Like, I don't know. Yeah. Like, <laughs> how high can she go? I mean, I think the sky's the limit. She can just point and yeah. be like, you. Yeah, just invite, just slide. Yeah. Beyond that would be like how powerful a guy would you have? Like at what level would a guy just like oh Beyonce is sliding into my DMs? Yeah, and yeah, and if you know for some wacky wackadoodle reason she slid into my husband's DMs, that's the one thing I would be like, well, I mean, you have to, you have to go do that. <laughs> You're obligated because I want to be connected to that. <laughs> <laughs> Try her on the first time and then maybe invite me the next time. We're getting off track. Let's get back to these lyrics. <laughs> we just got to let it be. Let it be. Let it be, baby. You just got to let it be. Let it be. Let it be. That's so, a shift. Yeah, that's the chorus. And that's, I mean, what's the underlying? Because obviously they're still together. Mm-hmm. They're still together. She dropped this whole album. Like they must have come to some kind of understanding right there must be i i I can't imagine we're inching towards forgiveness but Mm -hmm. she's not done spanking she's not yeah she's not done twisting the knife yeah when you hurt me you hurt yourself don't hurt yourself to me that's that's one of the this is kind of weird one of the best things that i ever read about love was from conservative columnist george f will Okay. If you can believe okay. that. No. Okay, okay go the ahead. The George F. Will. Don't yes, know who that is. that George F. Will. <laughs> <laughs> George F. Will had a couple of great quotes. He said he's, he's a real baseball fan. Okay. So every time that like opening day comes around, George F. Will writes this long, lyrical piece about what baseball means to America. And it's okay. all that kind of like treacly horse shit that I hate. <laughs> I but would it, like it. I it, love baseball. <laughs> I love baseball too. But I, the, the lyrical romancing of it. Anyway, he says that the baseball is just a, the perfect object for a man's hand. Just the way that it fits in and how a man can control a baseball. And every time I, like, every time he writes that article, I'm always thinking, okay, George F. Will has never held a bottle of Jack Daniels <laughs> or a boob. He just or has a boob. <laughs> <laughs> but George F. Will had this, it was a Valentine's Day column that he was writing and it's a real ode to his wife. And he was saying that after all the meals that they've shared together, all the nights that they've spent together, the children that they've raised together, the career goals that they've met together, that to say I love you kind of sells it short. He goes, right. And he ends the article with, with, you know, it's ridiculous to say I love you. I don't love you. I am you. Oh, that's like, nice. We're the same being. Right. Like we're part of it. And I really think that, that, that couples after a long time, after a lot of time together can really get to that point. And I think that's what Beyonce is driving at here. That's She's what, saying, like, don't hurt yourself. Yeah. You're hurting us. Yeah. Yeah. We're on our way to this sort of thing. If you could just keep it in your pants. Yeah. Like, and honestly, like we say, like, who's Beyonce going to date after this? Who's Jay-Z going to date after this? Right. It's like they're, they're at the top of the pyramid. They can only be with each other. Yeah. They got to figure out a way to make it work. And then- we have to work through this. We will work through this. She's going to make sure they work through this. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, you're not going anywhere. He's not He's not leaving that mansion alive. No, and they have children. Mm-hmm. When you diss me, you diss yourself. Don't hurt yourself. When you hurt me, you hurt yourself. Don't hurt yourself. When you love me, you love yourself. Love God herself. 
It's Beyonce calling herself God. Well, I mean, it's all, a lot of people are like, it's all in one, you know, I'm one of those like God lives within us mm-hmm. type people. So I understand that ver- lyric very much. Yeah. Like the, the, the way you respond to your love is the way you worship your God. Right. Here we go, though. I'm a dragon breathing fire. Oh, shit, she's mad again. Yep. <laughs> Beautiful <laughs> mane, I'm the lion. Beautiful man, I know you're lying. I'm not broken. I'm not crying. I'm not crying. You ain't trying hard enough. You ain't loving hard enough. You don't love me deep enough. We're not reaching feats enough. Blindly in love, I fucks with you till I realize I'm just too much for you. I'm just too much for you. I think that's the chorus or the verse that resonates with ladies the most. Yeah. Because, I mean, I've, I've been in relationships that I've ruined, that I've I've been in cars that I've crashed. Yeah. And that, that must be what they're, what they're walking away thinking. Like you didn't try hard You're enough. You're not trying you hard enough. You do hard enough. Your head was not in this. Yeah. Yeah. And you just weren't good enough for me. Yeah. Like that's. Yeah. And is it one of those things like you have to almost see them go and succeed with someone else to be like, oh, I should have tried harder. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. It is like, absolutely. It, it does take that that sort of success afterwards before you, before you're staring at your hands mm-hmm. <laughs> you're doing the Leonard Cohen thing yep. with Annie gone whose eyes compare to the morning sun not that I did compare but I do compare now that she's gone thanks yep. Leonard yep there's a George Strait song saying you look so good in love you look so good in love I wish you still wanted me it's the same thing like he sees her now in love in good love with someone else and being like I always see now yeah yeah. So that you are capable of that. I should have. I should have treated you better. Yeah. But it's another thing to like to to buck up <clears throat> and demand it from somebody who's already cheated on you. Right. Like it's a weird kind of strength. Like this isn't a kiss off song. This isn't Beyonce saying you're never gonna. It's right. Not, who She's did? saying I could. I mm-hmm. could bounce to other dicks. Yeah. I could drop you. I could take my. Own. I don't need you. But I'm still in this. Yeah. And you better fucking rise to my level. Mm-hmm. I've, I've, I've planted the dynamite beneath your heart. <laughs> <laughs> I got my finger on the trigger. But then she goes on. She goes, we just got to let it be. Let it be. Let it be, baby. Hey, baby, who the fuck do you think I is? I smell that fragrance on your Louis V, boy. Just give my fat ass a big kiss, boy. Tonight, I'm fucking up all your shit, boy. It's just like there's a roller coaster here. Like she's like furiously angry in between like but you're not going anywhere <laughs> exactly like this is the argument like when, when you're like when you're when you're with somebody you're living in the same house like you can't if you're having the argument you can't get away yeah like where are you gonna go there's no there's no slamming the door and getting in the car and just like I'm, i'll come back in the morning yeah it doesn't happen you're locked whether it's a mansion or a studio apartment yep like you're in it till the morning comes i've been in these fights where like i don't want to break up but I want you to hear everything I have to say yeah. and I will lock you in this house and we will have lulls where I exhaust myself from screaming and then I'm going to take a breather and then I'm like, but wait, there's more. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we're not done here. Oh, and another thing. I thought about this too. As long as we're going to be having the battle, we're going to fight about absolutely everything. Yeah. Or then the fights that start like, like do you ever have like an argument where you're, you're fighting about something that's stupid mm-hmm. and then you're like, that's when you realize like you don't know how long the argument's going to go on but then you kind of like have this feeling of dread like oh this is only the halfway point when you realize like we're not fighting about the sock drawer Mm -mm. (laughs) yep we've been holding this in too long (laughs) and you just kind of like i'm in a lucky situation like in previous relationships we would bicker and bicker and fight corbin and i don't fight often Mm -hmm. i mean that's why we're married because we don't fight often but when we do it terrifies us so bad that we're like, oh my God, do we have to get a divorce? And it's ridiculous. But because we don't fight so much, we're not good at it. And so we just get real nasty. And it starts off with the socks. And then yeah. it just snowballs into just everything that we've been kind of pinting up. But like, I think both of us know if we just go to bed, or sometimes we don't have to go to bed. We just need to separate for an hour. And then we'll just start talking like nothing happened. Yeah. We just, we're over it. Just detach, decompress. Yeah. I don't think Beyonce is interested in detaching. No. I don't think that's her thing. This wasn't a sock. (laughs) (laughs) When you hurt me, you hurt yourself. Try not to hurt yourself. When you play me, you play yourself. Don't play yourself. When you lie to me, you lie to yourself. You're only lying to yourself. When you love me, you love yourself. Love God herself. Yeah. We just got to let it be, let it be, let it be. This is your final warning. You know I give you life. If you try this shit again, you're going to lose your wife. You're going to lose your wife. That's 
Yikes. I want to know how true that is. I mean, because we've already established they are a family. They have children. She's been warned. If he does this again, is she going to be like, I guess I have to write another album? <laughs> or is she just like going to rip the cord? Mm -hmm. I wonder. I want like, the, it's, the, there's obviously there's a huge amount of like the pressure of fame mm -hmm. involved in this relationship. Like people get divorced, you know, people with kids get divorced and it happens and right. it, it can be a good thing. It can be a healthy thing. It can be a necessary thing. But when you have all of these like millions of eyes looking at you, like, do you think, you know, like Jay-Z is going like, I can't have this mark on my record. Like I can't have a failed marriage to Beyonce. That's going to become part of my legacy. Right. It's going to be because right now I'm, I'm not a big rap or, or hip hop fan. Right. There was a time when I thought when somebody mentioned Jay-Z, I'd be like, oh yeah, he's the best MC of all time. I heard that from somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> I know he's huge. Now when I hear Jay-Z, the first thing I think of is that's Beyonce's husband. Exactly. Like I think he I think he understands that that's the biggest part of his identity right now. Yeah, and that's a blow. Yeah. Well, is it a blow or is it like I is think it like him finally it the thing like I, I will behave? I mean both. It mm -hmm. can be both. Um, it is definitely uh, gave him some humility, I think. Um, I don't know. I can't speak for Jay-Z. Uh, it's going to be really interesting to watch how the rest of their life plays out after Lemonade. Yeah. Yeah. Which is the thing that I can't even imagine. Like, how do you... Because there had to be... Did she tell him that these are the songs? Like, did she play him this album? Did, did he hear I, it the same, at the same time that we all heard it? Or? Apparently, and I'm sure the people listening that know this better are screaming at us the same thing your friend is about to do. Mm -hmm. We have to watch Homecoming. Yeah. I think all of our questions will be answered if we do that. And we probably should have before we started before we started popping off about it. Let's just, just say the writers of the song, I like reading this, mm. Jack White, John Bonham, <laughs> Robert <laughs> Plant, because they do sample um, when the levee breaks, mm -hmm. is that it? Uh, Patrick Page, John Paul Jones, Diana E.P. Gordon, and Beyonce mm -hmm. Knowles. So a lot of people had their hands in this. So mm -hmm. Had her hands in the Queen's business. So go ahead and tell the audience what we're about to do. We're going to talk to my friend Krista Monster. Krista, Krista Michelle Monster is a bartender of some renown here in Houston. She is an artist, an artisan. She's many things. She's also a very, very badass bitch. It's important <laughs> when Krista Monster is talking, just shut up and listen. It's the best thing for you. <laughs> All right. And with that, here is our interview with Krista. We have a special guest. I'm glad to introduce my friend, my co-worker, local badass bartender, YouTube channel cooking host, artisanal stained glass maker, crafts lady, Krista Monster. Krista, how are you? Thank you for coming on. Hello. I'm doing well. What an introduction. <laughs> I'm really glad that you agreed to do this because I, I, I was nervous about talking about Beyonce because I don't know much about her, but... I think the moment where I, I sort of understood her a little better was when we were working together and you and Trox and Elena started playing Beyonce's Lemonade. And that's when I really, like, I always thought of Beyonce as sort of like, a, you know, a singer and a dancer, but largely, I hate to say it, but kind of like disposable music, you know, like, like, like you know, within a couple of years, people will have moved on to something else. You know, there'll be another singing, songwriting lady singing about boys like i hate to be that dismissive but that really was going on in my head until we were listening to lemonade with the three of you oh my god get him quite interesting. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Got him. Um, i mean that's really quite interesting you know uh if you look back at the history of beyonce knowles all the way from you know destiny's child she's been around for for quite quite a while and there's just something about I mean, all of her albums, but when Lemonade dropped, that just became kind of this bad bitch power anthem, you know, mm -hmm. for standing up for yourself. And I mean, there's tons of themes throughout that album, but um, yeah, it really, it really uh, strikes a chord. With, it sure uh, does. With Let me ask you <laughs> the questions I want to know beforehand, before we get into this song. First of all, do sure. you know that it's true that Jay-Z was Beyonce's first? Like first sexual experience. I've heard oh, that he was her first. I have no idea, but I okay. mean. Second, do you know the full story behind the elevator scene where her sister's beating his ass? Um, 
No, I don't know the full and complete story. Um, I do. I mean, I remember when those pictures surfaced uh, and it was the first time that her dirty laundry really got aired out in public. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Do you remember that? I just remember watching the video of it. And, and the, the only thing that I was struck by was how like still Beyonce was being. Like there's this chaotic scene where her sister is hitting her husband and she's kind of like, it was almost like she knew that there must be a security camera. Like I can't do anything. I didn't even remember that Beyonce was in the elevator. I thought it was just a few people, the sister and him, because um, that just shows how interested I was at the time. I was just slightly into this story, but I was like, um, immediately like he cheated. Like, why else would she go ballistic on him? He cheated. Mm -hmm. She caught him. <laughs> well, I don't, and I don't think that that necessarily is, I think it's the first time that maybe her, her sister, I mean, I don't, I don't know the full right story of that, but it's one of those things that if you look back through her discography, you can see examples of her telling him, stop doing this, stop playing around, stop fucking with me, stop messing with me and all of this. And so I think that, Lemonade came at a time where it finally hit the masses that this is what was happening. Wow, I'm yeah. learning already. Yeah, it definitely I mean, doesn't feel like this was one incident. Like yeah. it doesn't feel like like this was one night or one woman. Like this is an accumulation. And obviously if the family's getting involved and Solange must have known going back years. I mean, maybe, or maybe this is the first time that Solange was finding out that this was what was going on. I mean, I'm definitely not an expert on what their inside family uh, scoop was at all but if you're i mean if you're looking through her career um you've got ring the alarm on b-day which says mm -hmm. uh i'll be damned if i see another bitch on your arm right right I think chick is the radio, chick is the radio edit um <laughs> if i were a boy on sasha fierce you're looking at her talking about how she would behave how she would act if she were a dude which maybe is not directly pointed at him but is definitely talking about um, uh, what she would do if she were a dude and she wouldn't give a fuck and she wouldn't care and she would just go about doing whatever she wanted. Um, and then, I mean, you know, everybody knows to the left, to the left, right? Uh -huh. like, yeah. Yeah. So those kind of things, right? So like those things are, those things are sprinkled, uh, kind of throughout. Um, and then obviously lemonade seems like the culmination of all of those things, right? Like this is the, like, fuck you, I'm done with this shit, like, I'm taking my baby, I'm rich as fuck, I'm fine as fuck, fuck off, yeah. right? right. And, I'm dropping and a bomb on you. She's a lot the, of ass. <laughs> she's the queen of the world at this point, like, and he's an ugly motherfucker, like, how, what the yeah. fuck is he doing? You're, I mean, like, you're, anybody's personal opinion aside about what a person looks like, can never you can never know the depth of somebody else's love right like yeah and even if you are uh and also with fame and notoriety and all of those things like you never know what's churning under the surface with all of that and and multimillionaires can be just as sad you know just because she's beautiful and talented and has all this going for her you know there can still be that like super deep love connection and especially if what you say is true of her him being her first it even makes it more so with the, the fame and notoriety because there's millions and millions of, of eyeballs looking at you and wondering what decision you're going to make so yeah. like, like and I, sorry and i also think that with that though imagine trying to date after all of this like <laughs> finding somebody that you like and are compatible with and all of that is hard enough and then you're motherfucking beyonce what do you how do you you know i how do you find a guy, like, how do you find a man who has, like, the bottle, the courage to follow Jay-Z? Like, well, and she also, she talks about coming up with him, like, you know, talking about, she, she discusses his past in the lyrics. She talks about, you know, uh, she talks about kind of essentially them coming up. I mean, they came up in the game at different times, obviously, in, in a little bit. They came up in the game... Uh, not exactly parallel, but at, still at the same kind of uh, rise where they both hit that level of supreme stardom and they were by each other's side. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so there's a bond there that forms. But how do you, I, I, can't, I, I couldn't imagine, like, if, if Beyonce and Jay-Z broke up, and okay, it's pie in the sky, but let's say Beyonce fell in love with local bartender Ben Mowbray. 
<laughs> Your life would be very different, my friend. Yeah, it really would. It really would. <laughs> we could we'd probably collect a few more listeners, I would think, if I was rumored to be with Beyonce. I'll work on it. Do yeah, it, yeah, Ben. We really need some listeners. <laughs> I can't imagine a man like it would. It would have to be like, like who? Who would like? You're gonna, you're gonna go and raise Jay Z's kids. That's what you're gonna Oof. do. You're gonna step into Jay Z's fatherhood role. I like, mean, the choice that Beyonce's Beyonce face. babies, whatever. I'm a bonus parent, so. Uh, mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. uh, but you know, maybe she finds somebody that reps the H a little bit harder than her New Yorker husband. Exactly. <laughs> you know. <laughs> yeah, I think that's something we definitely should mention. Like Beyonce is not only, you know, queen of the world, but we're here in Houston where she's from. My friend Nakia was in one of Beyonce's earliest bands and they went on Star Search together. My friend Nakia, like we were all in high school and we all watched and I don't know what happened. I need to get in contact with Nakia and be, because I played softball with her and she ended up leaving whatever their band was called or their little group was Girls time. Is it girls' time? Yes. <laughs> because they sample. They sample the Star Search. She she samples that Star Search. Uh, the hip hop rapping girls' time, I believe, is the, <laughs> the one sample, right? Something like that. And they they lost to some country band. band? Some band I've never heard of. So I think it might have been a country band. I can't remember. But yeah, uh, my friend Nakia was in that group. And uh, anyway, I'm just saying, like. Beyonce is queen of Houston. I mean, it's it's her roots are so deep here. And we can cut this out if we think we need to because I'm scared. I don't know how the right information. I don't remember if her parents were divorced, but I do remember I was a waitress for one month at Rick's Cabaret in the Galleria and her father was a regular oh. there. Oh. Her, her, her dad. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> he's a character but i don't uh, you know being in houston texas uh and being in the service industry for a very long time you you see him he <laughs> yeah. he's around. but i don't know like was it okay that he was there if he wasn't married who cares you know but like if he was married and you know maybe he's just there I mean, time, but like things are great you know whatever <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah i don't know yeah i mean to each other to each their own. I think that with that, you know, whatever whatever your relationship allows, you know. But. but it adds a layer to this, like, did she grow up knowing that and seeing this happen to her mom and now it's happening to her? Is that another piece? Mm, of- I got you. I see the parallel that you're connecting there. Um, who knows? That's all speculation. Yeah. It's fun. <laughs> who knows? <laughs> Let's feed this web of lies. Spin them over and Beyonce together. <laughs> Yeah, I like that story. I don't know how much your girlfriend likes that idea, but um probably not at all. She might, who knows. We yeah. talked about it on like the David Bowie episode. Where, like you go sleep with David Bowie. I think she would be all right with it. I feel like if Beyonce was hitting on Corbin, I would be like, "Yeah, I have to let you do this." Yeah, you can't. I, I love you enough to let you do this. <laughs> <laughs> Daniel, if Beyonce was hitting on you, what would you do? Back off, I have a girlfriend. <laughs> he's keeping that he's keeping that blissful home under quarantine <laughs> what's up daniel I don't, alone. <laughs> I don't know you that's not me, that's man. not first <laughs> okay so there are there any lyrics in this song you want to talk about um because i'm not sure if we're going to talk about the lyrics before we bring on her interview We'll probably we'll do it at the top of the show the way we was. Okay. We always do. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, so lyrics of "Don't hurt yourself." Yes. Yeah. Usually when we start the show, we kind of just dive right into the lyrics, and then we just kind of riff afterwards, telling stories mm-hmm. about whatever these lyrics um, made us think about. But I don't know. When I see this, first of all, so I'm new to this. I didn't realize it was a rock and roll song, which it very, very much is. Oh. Fuck, yeah. I mean, and, you know, um, uh, so uh, Jack White, obviously. um, It has a Led Zeppelin sample from... Yeah, it has uh, Led Zeppelin in it. And um, actually, what's funny about this is that 
Um, uh, it does, I mean, and it, on, on Wikipedia, whatever. It's funny because th there, there are songs that I absolutely like. And when, uh, you can edit this part out or whatever, but like when Ben and I were talking about songs that I felt were quintessential or important to discuss or consider, you know, he asked for three and I gave him like eight, which is fine, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> Math, whatever. Um, uh, rules. Uh, that one of the other songs was Ring the Alarm, which it's very often uh, compared to. So, because it's that same Is she level angry of, in that one? Yeah, yeah, you should. I mean, we, <laughs> yeah. can, we can pause her comment, but it's, yeah, it's a very um, empowering, uh, I, like, I want to, like, play it for you now, you know, like, really? <laughs> but it's like, really alarm! And, like, she's, like, scream singing and it's okay uh one of those ones where you're you know if you uh we're very like okay when you're on the peloton and you're about to die from uh total exhaustion <laughs> if you heard that song you'd be like yeah. <laughs> you, would, you would step up your shit and notch or whatever um yeah you can just imagine like a lot of people being like yeah fuck this table flipping kind of nice angry whatever so uh, don't hurt yourself is a little more like brow raising, cocky, um, still with that level of self confidence, passion. But this is bring the alarms a little more screaming and like. But you hit that point with uh, in in don't hurt yourself when she's like, we just gotta let it be, let it be, let it be. Mm. Yeah, that's what at the end she's like. Do, do it again you're gonna lose your wife and so it sounds like this is final warning the whole album is final warning and from what i understand at the end of the album she forgives him yeah so and also you know this is you look at and and ben and i were kind of talking about this earlier or whatever but you look at you look at when your friend is in a fight with her boyfriend right mm -hmm. and She's like, fuck this dude. Uh, he sucks. I don't like him. Forget about it, whatever. And then maybe a couple months later, they get back together and you have to, you know, you have to kind of be like, all right, like this guy gets another chance or whatever. But the friends never forget, right? right. The friends are the ones who are like, I remember when you were crying on my couch and we were getting fucked up and drinking tons of whiskey or tequila and, and cursing his name and all that. And then the friend, the friend also has to learn to forgive or forget, right? And so that kind of gets a little a little bit tricky. And so Lemonade is one of those things where we're all like, you know, longtime fans or whatever, you're very excited. You're like, yes, finally, fuck. Like, you're, you're get out of here. You're bad for me. I don't like you. I am so frustrated. You know, you've done this shit. I've found my power. I have all of these songs to prove I found my power. And then obviously albums take several months to make. And so then at the, you know, several months, two years, especially if it's something this complex. And then at the end, there's forgiveness and, and uh, allowing that person back in and, and a level of understanding, I guess. But, yeah, and so I for us, for a lot of people, you're like, like, ah, yeah, get him out of here, scram, whatever. And you're like, wait a second, what? <laughs> I think that goes that goes to the heart of the the drama of the album because like like you say they like they've gone through this whole process this whole months long recording process she's found her power again but then there's got to be the moment where whatever their life is like at home she's going to drop the album it's going to be on the airwaves it's going to be out there in the world what effect is that going to have on their well, relationship they, they toured together yeah which is crazy like like, like I, I obviously like i knew that, that, that jay-z had been cheating on her and there's this this lemonade album but when i actually like read the lyrics like this is ridiculously confrontational yeah like i can't i can't imagine okay so jay-z was like even before he got with her is just like this tough guy and now to for him to allow her to publicly shame him on an album and being like and you're coming on the road with me to publicly shame you Wait with Mac. No. Yep. <laughs> yeah, that's right. But also, I don't know about allow, right? Like, there's this, but there's this. He fucked up. Yeah. He fucked up real fucking bad, 
And if that's his penance and he gets to keep his fucking wife and she's like, you know, you do this shit again, you're going to lose your wife. I, re I regret the night that I put a ring on it. Like all of those, all of those things is like, okay, I'm going to stay with you. You, you, I'm going to work through this. We're going to forgive. We said death till, till death do us part, all of that, but you're not going to get away with it. You're not going to not have to pay for that, you know, but I yeah. don't know about allow because what's his other option? Get a divorce, right? Get off, and then she can whatever, and then it would be the penultimate win, you know. So. Well, that's what I'm wondering. If he was like, "Please, I don't want you to put this album out. I forbid you to put this album out. Don't publicly shame me." Would she have just been like, "Well, bye. I'm doing this." Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Well, if and especially if he's like, you can't tell people that I cheated, or you can't any of any of like you can't whatever i think it'd be hard as fuck to hear the hear that and to make that decision i don't think it would come lightly but i i definitely think if somebody cheated on you and then was like hey by the way um don't tell anybody about this and mm -hmm. don't like it's you know you can't put me on blast like fuck you plus uh by the end of the album if you've decided to stay together you know what a fucking jammer lemonade is. And you know that it's all, like, if, if your marital happiness has worked its way out or whatever, y'all are going to be rich as fuck. Yeah. So I'm going to do really fucking well. And then plus when he comes out on stage, whatever, but. And then they also have a child. That's another thing to think about. Like at this point, do they have two they or have three, three if, mm -hmm. if children? Um, and that's a big part of forgiveness in something like this is like, especially when the kids are young, it's like, you almost feel like you have to work it out sometimes. Yeah. Have you seen Homecoming? No. Have you, have you watched the documentary? I want to. Um, yeah, definitely. I mean, I don't know if you're just recording today or whatever, but um, I highly recommend checking out Homecoming and seeing the level of ambition and pressure and strength that goes into putting something like that on, but also having a tour, having, having those things while having children. And, um, you know, I believe that she had a, a pretty rough pregnancy as well. Um, and then homecoming came like those, those babies were, that they were, so kids were unexpected. Well, not unexpected, but, not exactly planned, right? And um, was expecting twins, right? <laughs> that as well. Uh, and then because she had, um, she had the festival booked, like it was already going to happen, and then she found herself pregnant. So then, um, having to come off of pregnancy, and I, I don't remember how many months it was, but it was like a re like nine months, six months, something after having her kids. She did that two day jaunt of homecoming and the practice the rehearsal and like i've got i don't know if you can see it but i've got <laughs> right now talking about. it is so phenomenal awe-inspiring powerful um a lot of uh um hbcus uh involved in it from drum lines to singers to it it's it's amazing watch it for sure i will uh, It'll, it'll, it'll increase your, I think that any person who is not completely familiar with Beyonce, that will give you some insight into how artistic and how hardworking and how driven she really is within all of that. So, um, also uh, just watching the determination and what happens, like she she gets off of, she you know has her babies and then watching that transformation and then she fits into some like one of her like she's excited or whatever she got back into her like pre-baby weight and fit into some tiny dance uniform or something i don't know but like unbelievable my child turns six tomorrow and i still haven't lost the weight from the baby <laughs> and also you know that's totally okay and acceptable. Uh, she, you know, her, her body is the, the tool in which, you know, yeah. she uses it, right? So from singing to dancing to, I mean, just like, like a stage entertainment requires that level of structure and, and to have it honed in. But 
I, I don't know. Everybody beautiful, you know. I feel pretty. I'm okay. Yeah. How is like when... and, and like also to be Beyonce? Like what? I mean, come on. <laughs> I have to get back to being this unbelievable character. How do I do that? How many yeah. how many steps does it take to get to the center of Beyonce? <laughs> and I remember, I remember a long time ago. I I probably was maybe college. I was in college, and I remember reading some article, definitely written by a dude, talking about how she was really hard to get to exercise when she wasn't on tour or to keep her like body or something like that. And I just remember being so gagged at the idea of somebody writing about how she sh should have to look I'm like, man, I like a thick Beyonce. I like a thick Rihanna, you know? Like, uh, exactly. Like I would <laughs> care if in like the next 10 years, Beyonce blows up to like, Aretha Franklin, <laughs> goddess diva. I mean, like you're allowed to. I don't care. Yeah, I think that there's a there's a lot of emphasis placed on you know, and and pressure. And I think that that's everybody's aware of how much pressure is put on performers anyway. But um, I think that you know you have now you have wave makers like Lizzo or Cam Franklin, Houston, Texas. Burr, 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 burr. Shout out to Houston's other queen. Other queen, and that's and you're talking like she's the queen of Houston, and I was like, let's talk, let's talk about Cam Franklin. <laughs> <laughs> we can. <laughs> is she your buddy? Is she a friend? Uh, yeah, she is. Uh, she is my best friend. One of my best friends. Um, that's amazing. We we grew up. I mean, that's like a, a drift off into another land. But yeah, we we went to high school together. Uh, we've been friends for almost twenty years now. Wow. Um, is insane we did not like my, each other does she still have my aloha shirt i believe so uh do you still have my striped shirt i think i do yeah <laughs> <laughs> um she Cam yeah i came into Lalo where i worked and uh cam just said i like your shirt and i was like well if the queen of houston likes my shirt there you go <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I, I, have, <laughs> I have photos i have photos from that night oh, yeah, can we then, have that so we can put it on the instagram for the story <laughs> yeah yeah i'll i'll find it because i think unless ben like no <laughs> i think i have a photo of you i think i have a photo of you in my shirt and then we i definitely have a photo of cam in your shirt and then Chris, so it was me, Cam, and Christina Cricket, who is our, our other friend, and Cricket and I changed clothes, and then Ben and Cam changed shirts, and so we have a photo afterwards of the three of us outside, all <laughs> swapped around. That's I'll, I'll, look and I'll, see, I'll see what I can <laughs> see what I can't do for you. <laughs> can I ask um, how how is Jay Z received when he comes on? Like, cause it's like especially in Houston when it's Beyonce and Jay Z. Like, come on, it's a Beyonce show. Like, I don't think that's in my head, is it? No, uh, for sure, it's Beyonce. But like, like after a song like Don't Hurt Yourself or, or Ring the Alarm, like how are they not just like pelting him with tomatoes? They're just throwing <laughs> shoes at him. Like, I can't imagine cheering for this. I can't imagine cheering for him. How, like, what happens yeah, when- I, think, uh, I mean, you have, you have obviously mixed, mixed opinions throughout, mm -hmm. but I, I think that there are people who, Guest appearances get people going anyway. You know, mm -hmm. you have, uh, I mean, watch, watch Homecoming, but uh, you you have, you know, if Solange comes out or if anybody if anybody else shows up, your your brain is already broken from being excited about something that you weren't expecting in the first place. I do think that there's probably mixed opinions, but a lot of people loved jay-z independent of beyonce and so when you get an opportunity to see somebody that you loved independently maybe that's a, a level of excitement um i man i might get uh crucified for this but his last few times that i've seen him do guest appearances do not sound good it's oh, really? not impressive especially compared when when you have them side by side and he's coming out to do just like a verse and then you know fucks off it's it's not very good <laughs> wow but i think people are just really excited in the you know they have the the whole fanfare and, and jay-z 
great, but yeah. And I understand that in a crowd and there's maybe a little bit of forgiveness and um, sympathy for the fact that, you know, she's bashing him and uh, he's going to show face while being bashed in concert. True, but also, you know, she, she, she made her decision. She's a grown ass woman. She can choose whether or not to stay with that dude. Yeah. People, people forgive their spouses from cheating all of the time. You know, it's not mm. for everybody. That's not the ultimate deal breaker. Right. Yeah. So on that note, I have one last question. Sure. Do you think he will cheat again? And if he does, will it be over for real? Um, I fucking, I fucking hope he doesn't. That, that is really disheartening. Um, this has been life-changing for him, right? Hasn't he changed a lot? Like, got very spiritual, as far as we know. Yeah, I mean, I maybe maybe that was their turning point, right? I hope that that was rock bottom or whatever you wanna whatever you wanna call that uh, for him, and that that woke him up, and he realized how much he actually did have to lose, and what what that would mean for him and his life. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It would be monumentally stupid for him to do it again. Right. I mean, it's, you know, a very, you got a, you got a taste of what could actually happen to you if you did that shit. And there are warnings sprinkled throughout Lemonade. Don't, don't fuck this shit up. Don't, don't mess this up again. Yeah. So. And I think he gets it night after night after night when they have to, when they perform these songs. I mean, like it couldn't be hammered home more precisely to him, but like, like, it's it's very easy, I think, for for Beyonce to turn to him and go, "Look, I can fill a stadium. My personality, my show can fill a stadium. I don't mm-hmm. think that Jay Z can. Like, I think that like she gets to, she gets to she drops this huge big diss album on him that mm-hmm. that it vents all of her emotions. It it goes on to sell millions and and millions of copies and animate millions upon millions of people. And he's got to be there every night to see the reaction." that her emotion is getting amongst the people. Like, there's no, like he can't come out, even if he wrote, you know, eight verses on how sorry he is and like a really in- impactful emotional apology, it's not gonna have the same, it's not gonna light the same fire that her sure. is. Right. It's also, I think that with that, you know, there's, uh, there's, there's, there's two different things there, right? Like saying sorry is a lot, I mean, it's, it's great and it's wonderful, but it's a lot less appealing for record sales than, fuck you bitch <laughs> like get get out of here you know having uh i feel that there's a lot of people who need that feeling or that emotion uh validated or supported through songs and um lyrics but also an ass shaking beat you know where you're like, yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> i don't know i think like, like with beyonce i can I, I think of it like like you you sort of you judge a hero by the dragon that they slay, right? Like, right. and here's Beyonce, who's like literally taken the microphone out of Jay-Z's hand. Right. Like he, there's, there's no, I, maybe I'm wrong. I, I, I don't know. No, I think but I don't think right. that there's a Jay-Z response track to this. Like, like he just had to just go, Jay, that's it. And he's Jay-Z. He's the best MC that ever lived. And his own wife has just said, I'm taking this. You shut up. Yeah. And he did. Like, I think that I, uh, maybe I'm wrong, but I think that's why Beyonce resonates the way that she does. It's specifically because of who she's saying this about. <laughs> maybe. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't the process. I, I, I do like that in, uh, let's, let's loop this back around to Don't Hurt Yourself. She, okay. com- she says that she's the dragon breathing fire. Right? Yeah. She, oh, yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. You're right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And you know, she's she's a dragon, she's a lion. She compares herself to Malcolm X, which is interesting. Mm-hmm. Uh, monster says she is the monster. I am. <laughs> hey, claim, claim it, you know, speak it into the universe and you will be, right? <laughs> I wanna do all the things and then you go, know, right? It's easy. Okay, I lied. I had do have another question. Okay, we're here. We're here, we're talking. Let's do it. One more lyric that like the name of the song is Don't Hurt Yourself, which mm-hmm. I had a hard connection to. Like the whole song is like, who do you think you are? Go fuck yourself. I could get someone else. And so why is the main message don't hurt yourself? So in it, she says, uh, when you hurt me, you hurt yourself. So, so don't like, hurt yourself again. 
yeah, but like also don't fuck with me because when you hurt me, you hurt yourself. So like, don't hurt yourself. You know, don't, don't fuck with this. I'm, yeah. I'm strong and powerful and all that, like the whole like fuck you idea and all of that is essentially saying, you know, in that, like, stop trying to fuck with this because you're going to hurt yourself instead. Yeah. It's a warning. It's a warning. If, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. You're gonna yeah. get hurt. Don't yeah. hurt yourself. Yeah, don't play don't play yourself. She says don't play yourself. You're only lying to yourself, you know, like you you know, you you love you, you know. Don't don't fuck with this, I think is 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 the overarching message. And so it's just putting it into a way of like like instead of thinking about me, think about yourself, because this is what's gonna happen if yeah, or like like I am you and you are me. If you hurt me, you're hurting yourself. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We're one and the same. All right. All right. Bye, right, Jove. I think we've got it. I think so. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much for doing this. Thank yeah, you. I hope I gave you enough sound bites and deliciousness and things that you Absolutely. Did. Thank you. <laughs> sure. Of course. I hope we see you soon. Check out all of Krista Monster's work at flatsnakegoods.com. She's doing all kinds of incredible work with stained glass, with cooking, with booze, with craft bartending, all of your needs. Give it a look on her YouTube channel, flatsnakegoods.com. Diane? Yeah. Are you dressed up like a douche? I do, and I <laughs> am. Oh, first of all, thank you, Krista. That was amazing. Hope you guys learned something. Much appreciated. All right. Our Dressed Up Like a Douche comes, I think his name is Chris. This came from Twitter, and his name on Twitter is CMF Haynes. So, Def Leppard's Pour Some Sugar on Me. Everybody knows the song. I loved Def Leppard when I was a kid. <laughs> so, so did I. I mean, who didn't love Especially this song. It was massive. No, I mean, I loved it. Like, I, we used to play, like, Def Leppard albums, and we would, like, me and my friends would stand up on my friend's dad's pool table as if it was a rock and roll stage. That's amazing. We'd made cardboard cutout guitars. <laughs> oh, my god! Using hockey sticks for mic stands, <laughs> and we would absolutely rock that album. <laughs> Okay, so the line, it goes, well, I'll just do this whole verse. Lover's like a bomb, baby, come and get it on. Living like a lover with a... Red iPhone! That's what CMF Haynes on Twitter. <laughs> a red iPhone. Man, they would have been before their times. Little Nostradamus in... <laughs> I still don't know what that lyric actually is. I'll read it to you. <laughs> Living like a lover with a radar phone. Oh. Radar love, <laughs> I guess. So I just want to read this whole line because it's crazy. Love is like a bomb, baby. Come and get it on. Living like a lover with a radar phone. Looking like a tramp, like a video vamp. Demolition woman, can I be your man? Holy fuck, that's a jumble of stuff to <laughs> decipher. What? <laughs> that's awesome guys being awesome. Like there's no reason for Def Leppard to exist, to exist other than just guys getting together going, we're the badass. Okay. Like, they're not trying to deliver a message. They're trying to deliver a feeling. Yeah, I think so. I don't know what a video vamp is, but who cares? Just sing yeah. the song. Well, a video vamp is like, who is the, the the model who was always like twisting on hot cars and like Sammy Hagar. Okay. And and that yeah. Kind of Tawny Katane. Tawny Katane. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Tawny Katane's a video vamp. I think of... <laughs> Uh, Elvira. <laughs> I just went vamp vampire. But all right. Elvira's got more substance than Tawny Katane. Oh, my husband loves some Elvira. What's, I can't remember her real name. I can't either. Anyway. Um, okay. So that was our dressed up like a douche. Thank you, CMF Haynes. <laughs> ben, do you have a guilty pleasure song? Guilty pleasures. I do. Right. My guilty pleasure song, this episode is Brian Adams' Summer of 69. Oh, I would love to be able to play that on guitar. I would oh, yeah. love to be able to sit down and strum that one out. I'd love to be able to sing it the, the, like the, the big full-throated Brian Adams. We should cover that one time. I think there's a lot to that song, too. Yeah, there is. It's Because it's, Brian Adams, I think, would have been... I think I looked it up once. I think it would have been like three or something. Right. Like Everybody gets kind of like shakes their fist like, you weren't even alive, boy, but it's not about that. No. Mm -hmm. Um, I like that song. I don't think you have to be too guilty about that, but I, I can see it's, um, it has a lot of, um, 
stigma to it. Yeah, I don't feel bad about it, but it's like it's not going to be on a mixtape. I'm not going <laughs> to put it on a Spotify list. I'm right. not going to force anybody to. Nah. Have you heard of this guy, Brian Adams? <laughs> He's going to change your life. <laughs> yeah, if I had to pick a Brian Adams songs, it would be "Everything I Do, I Do It for You." I loved Robin Hood, that yeah, so movie. <laughs> have you, when was the last time you watched it? Um. I think it was actually on a couple of years ago and I watched it. It's still like, it's great for different reasons now. Like, like Alan Rickman chewing on the scenery so in that movie good. is fantastic. Like he gets mad and he's just like, he's talking to those peasant girls. They're just like, you be in my chambers at 10 o'clock. You, 10, 15, <laughs> bring a friend. <laughs> it's great. I'm going to go home and watch it tonight after I watch um, Homecoming. But so I remember vividly, my mom and my aunt were going to the movies to watch Robin Hood. And I was, I, I must've been like, 12 I don't know but I didn't want to go and I had to because she's my mom this is what we're doing today and I was like I don't care about Robin Hood this movie looks dumb I went and saw it and I loved it and I had a crush on the young boy who plays Christian Slater's brother younger brother in it so this tells you how old I am you I'm not having a crush a, on Christian Slater? I didn't have a crush on Christian Slater yet because I wasn't old enough to like boys that age I liked the younger brother who looked like my age and I thought he was so cute and he had that little skater boy haircut that I liked mm. sorry there's like a motorcycle outside <laughs> anyway um I went back that summer to the movie theater and watched it three more times. That's how much I <laughs> loved that movie. <laughs> the girls my age when Christian Slater was big, like in the in the early nineties, like sort of I think even like like after Pump Up the Volume and after It was Heathers, Heathers for me. Yeah. Yeah, Heathers for me is when I switched to Christian Slater. Do you remember his movie Cuffs? No. He played like a young like private detective or something like that, or he was like an undercover cop. It was almost like twenty one jump street or something like that. Like it was it was clearly a take on that but he did the ferris bueller thing where he would like he would turn and break the fourth wall and talk directly to the uh -huh. audience in the of it. i went there with my first girlfriend I was, oh. I, I, cuffs probably came out in 1991 or God, something i like didn't that. even know this so i was 10 or 11 and there's a scene in cuffs where he's talking about the like the guy who's going to be like the main villain his main opponent in it and uh, he's kind of feeling bad about it. He just kind of turns to the camera and goes, is he better looking than me? No. Oh. And all the little girls in the theater are just like, just to me, like, no, absolutely <laughs> not. <laughs> That's so funny. Oh, now I have a list of things I have to see. Um, I, we'll get to mine in a second. But uh, Corbin had never seen The Legend of Billie Jean. I've never seen The Legend of Billie oh Jean. Oh, my God, people. And did you not grow up at the same time as me? You have to go watch that. Um it's, it has this, like this whole arcing parallel narrative as Joan of Arc. It's very, very good. It's very 80s. And Christian Slater is in that. Um, and he's very young and he's bleach blonde. Yeah. Um, I won't say anything about that because we need to move along. But mm. um, go watch Le Legend of Billie Jean. It's wonderful. We're going to start a whole new podcast just <laughs> focused on Christian Slater movies. Like, like where the Jack Nicholson impression begins and where it ends. <laughs> I, if you had asked me from like age, I don't know, 14 to probably 30, what my favorite movie of all time was, I would have said Heathers. Yeah. Okay. I loved I, Heathers. Yeah, I would totally agree with you. All right. I have a guilty pleasure song. And? I have four guilty pleasure songs. <laughs> <laughs> I'm cheating a little bit. Cheating. Unbur Pun, oh, no. <laughs> Pun intended. The theme of the episode. Unburden yourself. These are all four Reba McIntyre songs. So, I don't know what was going on with country music from like the 70s and early 80s. 80s but almost every single song was about cheating and Reba McIntyre had the best ones to me. <laughs> so the four songs are One Promise Too Late, Only In My Mind, Little Rock, and Whoever's In New England. Ooh. So I'll just quickly, One Promise Too Late is her singing like, I would have waited forever if I'd known that you'd be here. Uh, we could have spent our lives together. But she's like, I met someone before you and my heart just couldn't wait. So no matter how much I adore you, I have to stand beside the promise that I made. And then she's like, where were you when I could have loved you? And she's like, the line is, you came along one promise too late. Oh. Like, I, I've already married this person. I wish I had met you before him. Oh. Which is crushing to her husband to hear. Yeah, I would have been, I, I don't even, oh. That hurts. <laughs> so, Only In My Mind is her and her husband are sitting there and he holds her hand and he goes, have you ever cheated on me? He just bluntly asks her, have you ever cheated on me? And um, she goes through all of these things that she says and her answer to him is only in my mind. 
And then the song shifts mm. and she's talking to the guy she's been thinking about mm -hmm. and saying like, you know, we've only been together as friends, but I can't talk to him about the things that I talked to you about and all this stuff. And um, why am I blushing? Is it you or is the heat? Because they're sitting on the porch and it's hot. Yeah. But um, she's honest with her husband and she's like, I've thought about it, yeah. basically. That's what I think the the sort of the dirty little secret that, that comes out and you don't, you might not think about it unless you actually like, like you have cheated mm -hmm. is that you end up being more honest with the person you're cheating with than the person that you're living your life with. Right. And I think that's the moment where the guilt gets you. Yeah. Like that's the moment where you're just like, I, I, this cannot go on. I'm letting I, this other person know me better than my, yeah. Yeah. That's, that, that's the big yikes moment. So, and then little rock is straightforward. She's like little rock. Guess I'm gonna have to slip you off. She's talking about her wedding ring. Oh. <laughs> Little Rock, I'm gonna slip you off and I'm gonna go have some fun. Oh. That's what that song's about. Mm -hmm. And then finally, whoever's in New England, this is a conversation she's having to her husband who she knows is cheating on her. Mm -hmm. She's packed his bags. She's left him in the hallway. He's going on another business trip. Business must be booming or is something else moving in the air up there. Um, she knows he's cheating on her with someone on a business trip, but she tells him the overarching, arcing, arching uh, point of the song is that she's saying, I'll still be here when you get home. She's going to stand by him. And so, and the song is when whoever's in New England's through with you in Boston has better things to do, had better things to do. You know, it's not too late because uh, you'll always have a place to come home to when whoever's in New England's through with you. Oh God. Yeah. I don't think I could ever sleep with somebody with a thick Boston accent. <laughs> I feel the same way. <laughs> Except for Bill Burr. I've got it bad. <laughs> I've got it bad for Bill Burr. It's embarrassing. And I have been open with Corbin of how bad. I mean, he is on my list where I'm like, that's like, if Corbin wants to sleep with Beyonce, I'm taking the redhead and build freckled guy for some reason. <laughs> I love him. I like your chances with Bill Burr a lot more than I like Corbin's chances with Beyonce. His wonderful wife, Nia, would wipe the floor with me. I wouldn't dare <laughs> <laughs> i love her too this is how deep my love is for bill burr i just found out that they're pregnant again and he's gonna have a son and i'm so happy for them <laughs> but i still love him <laughs> guilty pleasures well, that's it for the Cheaters episode of Rock the Cash Bar. I hope you Keep guys enjoyed it. your private it. parts private. <laughs> okay, just a quick reminder before we go. If you would like to join the Patreon, uh, they gave us this episode today. Go to patreon.com slash rock the cash bar. One tier, $5 a month. I mailed out some cool swag today for our Patreon listeners and members. So um, you can get that too. And you will always have a chance to vote on Thursday's songs. We have that Spotify playlist somewhere out there. I still haven't put it on our website, but we'll get to it. Thank you, everybody, for tuning in. New episodes every Monday and Thursday. If you have a misheard song lyric you'd like us to read on the podcast, email us um, at rockthecashbarpodcast at gmail.com. Tweet us, Facebook message us, find us on all the things. Thank you guys so much, and we will see you again on Monday. Thank you. Don't hurt yourself.